Today I am brewing the somewhat complex style of Old Ale. It's a beer style that's malt forward, slightly sweet, and may have some tones in there of dark fruit. And I'm going to brew this one by experimenting with an overnight mash. I'm Martin Keane and I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And today's brew day is actually going to be split across two separate days. Old Ale is a beer style that originates from strong beer held in casks for an extended period of time, sometimes a year or more. During that period, the beer would start to take on some of the characteristics of the wooden casks itself plus a little bit of oxidation, which would lead to some of these dark fruit flavors. I don't have any casks on hand and I'm not planning on deliberately oxidizing my beer, but I'm still going to attempt to brew a beer that will generate some of those same characteristics. Now let's talk about the different options we have for an overnight mash, specifically with a system like the one I'm using. This is from Claw Hammer Supply and it's effectively a brew in the bag system. Now the way this works is in here I have a grain basket. I put my grains in that basket. Then I add the water. The water comes out a port at the bottom of this kettle here, goes through a pump where it is recirculated back to the top where it comes out through a spray nozzle at the top and that way the wort is continually passing through the grain at a specified temperature. Now I've been thinking about different ways that I can perform an overnight mash using a system like this. Now option one is just do a normal mash but just keep it running for a lot longer than normal. So start to use the pump to recirculate and use my temperature controller here to maintain temperature. Um, I don't really like option number one because it means running my pump unattended for hours and hours at a time. Seems like there's the potential for stuff to go wrong with that. So I'm not going to just leave this running for like 12 hours. Option two would be to get the mash to the desired temperature and then just shut everything down. If you happen to have something you can use for insulation, you could even try insulating the mash tun. But no matter what, if the heating element isn't running, this is eventually going to lose heat over time. And once the mash reaches a temperature that's below about 143 Fahrenheit or 62 Celsius, you're going to see very little sugar conversion at that point. So we're really sort of doing like a, a step mash in reverse by letting this cool down over time. But yeah, that's an option. So then there's option three and this is the option that I'm going to pick. So what this option is all about is not using any of the recirculation capabilities of this system at all. I'm literally just going to have water in here that is kept at a certain temperature using the heating element and the temperature controller. So I'm going to set the temperature controller to my mash temperature and just leave it at that. So there's no pump and no recirculation. Okay, so for ingredients, we're going to build a beer here with a original gravity, we hope of 1068. We'll see how this works out. Uh, that should give a beer around 7% ABV. Now the base malt for this beer is Maris Otter. Then I'm going to add in some sugar. Now you can add in something like molasses or treacle. I'm going to use Belgian candy syrup, specifically D90. Now this doesn't go into the mash of course, but this will make up about 8% of the fermentable ingredients in this beer. So if you're brewing a five gallon batch, that would be one of these, which is one pound. I'm also going to be adding in Crystal 45 at 6% and Special Roast at 2%. And then to balance out all of this sugar, well, then I'm also going to add between 1% and 2% of Black Patent Malt. Fix my hair, 
close the latch on the gate I fly across this town cause I don't wanna be late Pull up to your house and your dad is staring holes through me We see a movie spent all the time So the grains are in Recirculation is off, but I do have the heating element on. And I can see on the controller here, it's just pulsing the heat light every now and again, just to maintain the temperature, which I've set to 152 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius. So that concludes my involvement with the mash today. I'm just gonna let the temperature controller worry about keeping this at 152 and uh, check on it tomorrow. White dress and the cutting of cake. Well, it's the next morning now. I've been mashing for about 12 hours and take a look at that temperature, 152. Now, it may be slightly misleading to imply that I just left this for 12 hours and just walked in for the first time now. I did check on it a few times. Um, but actually it has been maintaining the temperature really pretty well. It's only ever deviated a couple of degrees at any point. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the grains and take a pre-ball gravity reading. Well, Beersmith tells me to expect a pre-boil gravity of 1054. My actual temperature adjusted pre-boil gravity, 1056. For hops, I am using Fuggle hops, both as bittering and aroma. So at 60 minutes at the top of the boil, I'm gonna put in enough Fuggle hops to get to about 32. IBU, that is two bags of hops, two one ounce bags if you're brewing five gallons. Then with 10 minutes to go, that's when I will add one other bag of Fuggle hops and this will contribute about six IBU. With 15 minutes to go, this is when I'm adding in my Belgian candy syrup, that's D90. The beer is cooled and in my bucket, and the original gravity ended up coming in at 10.69. I was aiming for 10.68, so I've basically hit my numbers with very little effort. Now, the yeast I am using for this is London Ale Yeast. This is Y Yeast 10.28, and this is a good choice because it has good attenuation, so it should be able to handle this beer. Remember, this is gonna be about 7% when it's done. You know, I really enjoy these little process things that just add a bit of flexibility to the brew day. The fact that I was able to heat up some water, dump the grains in, set the temperature controller, and just walk away, all within 15 minutes makes it very convenient, and then I can just come back at some point later whenever I feel like it and deal with the boil. But of course, the proof is in the pudding, so let's see how this beer actually turns out. All right, Lauren, you ready to try some old ale? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's old ale that's not very old, it's a month old. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is a, a beer style that, I mentioned it's got a very broad number of sort of characteristics. Mm -hmm. Can be quite light, can be quite dark. What do you think on the aroma of this one? The look of it, right? That, that's staying in. <laughs> How many beers have you done with this? <laughs> 
Hi. Okay, by the look of it, as I see, um, it's, it's really dark, but I can see like a red tint to it. If yeah. you really like hold it up. So, it smells weird. It smells weird? Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's say technical descriptor, is it? Yeah. Weird. It smells kind of like elderberries. Like, I'm not 100% positive if I know what elderberries smell like, but I think it's this. <laughs> well, yeah, I think there are some esters you're picking up on there. Okay. Um, uh, along with quite a bit of malt, too. Let's see what we get with the taste then. Okay. It tastes like the elderberry smell. And it also tastes a bit like licorice. Beers that taste like this, um, I find over time change quite a lot okay. in taste. So I've had some Belgian quads that tasted quite similar to this when they were young. And then over time they sort of uh, develop more dark fruit kind of flavors. And I suspect that with a bit of age, that licorice sort of elderberry flavor mm -hmm is gonna develop into something a little bit different. My impression with this is like the Belgian quads when I have tasted these at this stage, is that this needs to be put away somewhere and left for a few months. Like in a cool dark room. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Maybe we should um, do that. And to age it. So as it is right now, it's drinkable, but I wouldn't say it's really gonna be one of my favorites. Yeah, I agree. Um, but. I think with a bit of time, this one really could live up to its name of old ale, and, and um, that's and the thing. It's not old enough. It's not old enough. It it it's definitely got a, a complex taste to it, right? Yeah, it's but there. It, There's do lot. it doesn't taste mature to me. No. So take a look in the description for the recipe, the beer kit, and so forth. Next week we will be looking at another dark, strong beer that is best aged. So we'll see how that one turns out. But in the meantime, cheers! cheers.